Hello everyone and welcome back to Psyched. When you have to go out and you see dark clouds in the sky, you might bring an umbrella, even if it's not raining yet, whereas you wouldn't do the same if the sun is out. Indeed, we as humans constantly try to predict our future. And as it turns out, our compulsion to make predictions is not just a way to avoid getting wet, it is crucial to function in a dynamic world. How and why our brain makes predictions is explained by the theory of predictive coding. And in this video we will discuss what predictive coding is. So here we go. Predictive coding relates to both sensory and cognitive processes. Within the sensory domain, in other words our perception, we compare a prediction to incoming information. Let's take vision as an example and let's compare our vision to a camera. A camera picks up light and reconstructs what enters through the lens. In the human brain, something similar happens. Visual information enters through the eyes and an image is built up in our visual cortex. However, whereas the story for the camera ends here, our visual system does much more. Whenever we see our surroundings, we already have a prediction of what our environment should look like. This enables our sensory systems to work way more efficiently. So rather than constantly processing all visual information, our brain just compares the incoming information to what it expects to see. And this works because most of the things we see around us don't move. For example, if you're sitting next to a lamp and you see the lamp, well, 10 seconds later it's probably still there. Now these predictions we make are based on our prior experience and knowledge. As long as this experience is up to date, our predictions should be accurate. However, in some cases, our predictions do not match the incoming information. And this is what we call a prediction error. Imagine you walk outside at night and you see something dark moving a little behind a tree. You expect it is a cat, because you have seen cats in this area before. However, as soon as you get closer, you see that it is just a bush which was moving in the wind. So, the thing you recognized as an actual cat is no longer a cat, and your prediction was wrong. So a prediction error is a mismatch between what you expected and the actual incoming information. Now, in this example the mistake is rather mundane. However, in other cases prediction errors are crucial for learning. If prediction errors occur repeatedly, our brain will recognize that its predictions are inaccurate, and it will update them accordingly. And such updating of a prediction mismatch is basically equivalent to learning from mistakes. For example, when learning how to ride a bike, initially you will fall quite a few times. This is because our prediction where our body should be on the bike to maintain balance is very inaccurate. However, every time you fall off, our brain notices that its prediction was off and will update its prediction for the next time. Over time and many many more attempts, you will learn how to keep your balance. In other words, your prediction of where your body should be on the bike is now accurate enough. So in this example, somebody notices and learns from their own mistakes. However, predictions can also be updated through feedback. And this is what we call feedback learning. Imagine you mispronounce a word. The more people that correct you, the more likely you will be to adjust the way you pronounce that specific word. So much for the theory of predictive coding, but when and where does it happen in the brain? One prominent way to investigate predictive coding is by using electroencephalography, or EEG. When participants perform a task in which they make errors, a clear deflection in the EEG signal can be seen shortly after the mistake. This particular wave is called an error-related negativity, or ERN. When people don't notice the mistake themselves, but are given feedback about their answer being wrong, we see a very similar EEG wave, which is called a feedback-related negativity, or FRN. Both the error and feedback-related negativity signals are generated in the anterior cingulate cortex, which is thought to be the primary region in the brain that encodes prediction errors. Following the ERN and FRN, we often observe another category of EEG waveforms. This follow-up wave is either called an error positivity or a P3 component, depending on a specific task. These components do not just reflect that a mismatch in prediction has occurred, but are also positively correlated with updating of a prediction model. 
In other words, the error positivity and P300 reflect learning. Now these components are harder to pinpoint to a specific brain region, and they rather originate from a network of regions in the frontal and parietal cortex. Anyway, that's it. We hope you enjoyed this introduction on predictive coding. If you did, please consider leaving a like. And as always, we hope to see you the next time.